We're making bright decisions today by installing a pool chain light and hoping it'll shine some positivity on our lighting situation in our furnace room. Corey will show you how it's done, easily, and of course with tips and tricks along the way. As always, I'm Danielle and welcome to the Core Homes. Hi there, Corey from Decor Homes. Today, we're actually installing a pull chain key light, okay? These things are very basic. When you actually look at the back of them, what we're actually doing is we're hooking up our whites uh, or our neutral under the silver connection, and we're hooking up our black or our hot wire under the gold connection, okay? So on in this scenario, we have two hots, and we have two neutrals, okay? The power has been turned off on all this. Before we do anything, we turn off the power, we use plug testers, and we make sure that everything's fully safe. Okay, what you do is to feed the wire in between this silver part and this gold part, okay? So, let's make our connections. I like to do neutrals first, so let's go put those in first, okay? So we got our two neutrals, we take our screwdriver, we screw it in. That was basic. Now let's put in our hots. See this Z pattern we always talk about? If the wire is straight, to push the wire in, it just doesn't go in, okay? When you put in a Z pattern, something like this, you can actually push the wire in and out and in then out very easily. And this is what we try to achieve when we're pushing our wires in and out for receptacles and everything else, okay? So we got these connections are in nice and tight. What we need is our hot in. So we put in our hot under there. That's a good connection. Put this hot in here. Now it's a little bit tight. Hey, but we got it. Go. We tighten with our Klein screwdrivers. The screwdriver's great. It actually, it's a reversible, so it, it'll either go a number one or a number two Robertson. Check this out. So this screwdriver, it's a number one and a number two. I have it on my number one. Push it in, I can yank it out, and then I can lift this gold part here, and it opens like a valve for me to use the screwdriver. And you can extend the length of it if you want, so they're pretty cool. Now that we have this pull string light in, everything's nice and tight. Our connections are tight. They're not going anywhere. We could turn it. There's these 832 bolts, okay? 832s typically go in octagon boxes or ceiling lights. On receptacles, they always use 632s. So 632 is just a smaller bolt compared to the 832, which is thicker, okay? So if you're looking for replacement bolts for receptacles, use 632s. For ceiling lights or octagon boxes, use 832s. So basically, we can put these in. This one almost appears, the 832s are not long enough because once this pushes in, it's not actually reaching the gap. So we actually need to switch these 832s. So let's get this one out. Get this one out here. So one thing that's important to know, receptacles need to be finished. So when you're looking at a receptacle here, if you were to have a building inspection or an electrical inspection, and if you don't have your plate covered, prepare to fail over something silly. This needs completely cover. I might be okay, I might not be. So. So ironically enough, after talking about 832s and 632s, my 832s were too short, okay? I need them about, um, I don't know, about half inch longer. So I couldn't find any bolts that fit. So we got our breakaway bolts here. They're 832s and these ones come up to two inches long. This is our original length and we're probably gonna break it off at the second last breaking point. So here's the breakaway bolt. Over here 
is the one inch mark, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters. So what I need is one and a quarter. So I need to break off one, two, three of these points, okay? Let's break them off. So to break off these little breakaway points, I always use linesmen, okay? Linesmen, it's hilarious. I never used to use linesmen, and I always ask myself, what do people even use these things for? Ironically enough, I'm using two in one project, okay? <laughs> so here we go. We get our linesmen. We're trying to break off three of these pieces. So what I do is I grab with my linesman and I grab right below the spot that we're breaking off. And then with my other pair of linesmen, I grab right above the spot we're gonna break off. And then we just twist back and forth until it breaks. Boop, look at that. And when I said twist, I meant tilt back and forth. So I made that look really easy. If you don't have the experience, you might actually end up wrecking the threads on these things because you're squeezing so hard. So I, bro I broke one apart without really saying too much. So let's explain more so the idea. I'm grabbing this, I'm grabbing three in right above the spot where we need to break, okay? Now, when I'm holding on to this, if my uh, pliers were sideways and if I t tried to break it apart it would actually just go back and forth it would rock so it's important that your pliers are actually turned this way and not this way when you're breaking it apart because that's when experience kicks in and you're basically you'd be wrecking all the threads so when you turn sideways you go like this and then typically you just rock back and forth and then it becomes fairly easy without really wrecking the bolt that you're having Okay, that's just a small tip. So now let's take our bolts and let's put them in. So originally our 832s were just the factory ones that came in and they weren't long enough. So this one, one thing to note is that these heads are actually larger than the factory finished heads that we had when we got this. So they don't actually fit in here, okay? Typically there's pan head screws that fit through here. You put the screw in and then you turn that way you can remove the light fixture without actually having to remove your bolts. And if the bolts stay in there, then there's a lesser chance that they'll go missing. So we get this, we pop her in. We always screw in by hand at first because it's easier. Get it up to the certain point that you need and then that way you finish off with a screwdriver. So that's one. Now we're close enough, I'm just gonna take my screwdriver, pop the rest of this in. Okay, now we're nice and tight. LED lights are the way of the future. They take up like one tenth of the amount of energy, um, but they're like two, three times brighter than old style bulbs. So uh, we got our light back on. Let's go back to the panel. Okay, so now we're back to the panel. Uh, we have our breaker, but here's one thing that's always important. Whenever you're turning on a breaker, don't stare at the breaker, okay? If you stare at the breaker, what could happen is, say if this breaker ever decides to fail, and what would happen is a, a big explosion. And if that were to happen, you're staring right at it. You could get hit in the face. You could lose your vision, okay? So whenever you're turning on a breaker, you touch the breaker, you turn around, then you turn it on. Do we see light over there? Perfect. Now we're gonna make our way back over to this section. Now we're back to our light. Our breaker's turned on and we have power, okay? So this is a simple task. You just literally have to have the wires available or an electrician who roughs in a receptacle or an octagon box for you. And here you got some light. This isn't super, this isn't a difficult job, but it gives you light where there is none, okay? Appreciate you watching. If you have any other questions, you let us know in the comments below. All of our tools are listed below if you have any questions. And uh, please don't forget to hit subscribe. Magic. You ain't done learning yet. Make sure you check out our other videos. Like that one.
and subscribe. Don't forget.